This exercise covers the basic functionality of adding dimensions to drafted drawings. The Pro and Architectural versions have additional dimensioning features to those covered here. A linear dimension can handle horizontal, vertical and aligned dimensions. Specify the two points to dimension between. The third point controls the dimension line position and orientation. So if the cursor is between the points horizontally, then you get a horizontal dimension. If outside the points horizontally, but between the points vertically, you get a vertical dimension. Anywhere else, it's aligned. Or by selection of either the H, V or A keys. You can do this here as the cursor is still, but the dimension position changes with these keystrokes. You will notice that the appearance of the dimension and its settings can be modified in the ribbon. This can be done as the dimension is created or after it has been placed. We will look at these options later. As we place the remaining linear dimensions, you will notice that we are not reselecting the linear dimension button at any point. We are simply right clicking the mouse to repeat the last command. OK, let's now add some other dimension types. Diameter dimensions are pretty straightforward. Just select the arc or circle and move the cursor to achieve the required position and click into place. Radial dimensions are equally simple. Select the arc or circle, position and click to accept. Finally, angular dimensions. This command creates an angular dimension between three points. The dimension always measures the angle counterclockwise from first point to the third point, with the second point being the corner of the angle. So we pick the first point of the angle followed by the corner point. For the third point we are holding down the shift key which is constraining the angle from the corner. Now we move the cursor down slightly and click. The third point is now defined and we can see the resulting dimension which can be clicked into place. Let's zoom in a bit and look at how we can edit the dimensions. As with other drafted commands, we select the item to edit first, in this case the lower horizontal dimension. When selected, you notice the blue entity handles are displayed and the appearance of the ribbon changes to show the current properties of the dimension. Many of these are self-explanatory and you can see the dimension immediately updates when we change the font. Similarly, we can modify the height, the offset of the text relative to the dimension line, and we can also turn leader lines on or off and control the rounding of the dimension value. It's possible to modify the dimension text by using the prefix, override and suffix fields. Before we look at these we will quickly look at the three copy options to the right. These options copy characters to the clipboard, so for example this button copies the diameter symbol allowing us to paste it into either the prefix, override or suffix text fields, like so. The prefix field lets us specify the text that goes immediately in front of the dimension value. Don't forget to put a space on the end of this if you need a gap to the dimension value. As soon as you click outside the box, the dimension updates. The override and suffix fields work in the same way. If anything is entered in the override field, then it replaces the actual value. 
As with the prefix field, the suffix field requires a space to separate it from the dimension value, obviously at the start in this case. OK, let's reset the dimension. Now let's reposition the right-hand entity handle of this dimension and you will see here that the value automatically updates. You will also notice that the dimension lines and text have flipped outside. If required, we can put the text back inside simply by moving the third handle. 